If you've taken a look at the NBA standings lately, you probably noticed that there is a balance issue between the Eastern and the Western Conferences right now. You could argue that any team in the Eastern Conference that's not the Boston Celtics would be competing for a play-in spot in the West, certainly just strictly based off the records between the two conferences. And the question here is, is this a problem for the league and is there any way they can fix it? Now, this has been a thing for a while. I would say over the last 10 years or so, the Western Conference has just been better than the East. And that changed on a year-to-year -year basis, especially in an era in which we have so much player movement. But generally speaking, the depth of the Western Conference has just, over the last 10 years or so, been stronger than the East. And this year, that is more profound than ever. Now, there's a lot of different reasons for that uh, in terms of some injury issues in the Eastern Conference with Joel Embiid, in terms of Milwaukee having a very strange season because of the Doc Rivers situation. And obviously, Boston has been dominant. But if the Bucks had a better coaching situation, maybe they just kept Coach Bud. If the Knicks had been healthy, if the Sixers had been healthier, the conferences wouldn't look as imbalanced as they do. And the reason that this could potentially be an issue is because theoretically, obviously we have no idea what's actually going to happen in the postseason, but theoretically the Celtics, the best team in the East, is going to have a significantly easier path to get to the finals than whatever team comes out of the Western Conference. Because from top to bottom, there are just much more difficult matchups. I mean, when you think about the teams that are going to be potentially in the play-in in the Western Conference, it could be Phoenix, New Orleans. Orleans, Sacramento, the Lakers, the Warriors. There's a lot of teams that could be in the play-in that you could realistically see potentially making a run to the conference finals that the one and the two seeds are going to have to deal with in the first round. Whereas on the flip side for teams in the Eastern Conference, you know, depending on how things shake out, they might be playing the Hawks in the first round. No disrespect to the Hawks, but like the difference between having to play them as the one seed and potentially the Pelicans as the one seed is night and day. And so in this particular season, obviously it's, it's more profound than it normally is. But how did we get here? Like, how did we end up with such an an imbalance in the two conferences. Well, for one, certainly, you know, player movement has a lot to do with that when you think about LeBron going from the East to the West a handful of seasons ago. When you think about Victor Wembanyama, you know, moving into the future, him going to the West when the Pistons had the best odds uh, to get the first overall pick. They had the worst record in the league. No, they had even odds with the Spurs. But him going where he did, obviously, is going to shift the balance, although not necessarily in this individual season. And just generally speaking, there's just more talent and the teams are better in the West. And that's not really something that the league can necessarily prevent. Uh, there can be some changes that we're going to talk about later in terms of expansion and adding teams and shifting around some of the teams. But at the end of the day, you know, there's not really anything the league can do, even if you do foresee it as a potential issue. For me, the bigger problem here in terms of potential imbalance is that it's not just in the moment. It's not just this season, although the standings, obviously, it's a very profound difference. You also got to think about the future. I mean, the Celtics are going to be good for a while. The Sixers obviously haven't been. The, the Bucks have Giannis. There's some up-and-coming teams like Orlando in the Eastern Conference. But even when you think about the future of the conferences, the West is in a much better spot. Of course, with Victor Wembanyama potentially, you know, making the Spurs into something really significant over the next couple of seasons. The Thunder have a fantastic future despite being one of the best teams in the conference. Uh, Minnesota is going to continue to get better because Anthony Edwards is going to continue to get better. The Nuggets aren't going to fall off anytime soon. There's just a ton of teams. Even Memphis is a really good team, one of the better teams in the West last year. Uh, because of injury issues and other stuff, they weren't very good this year. There's still depth within the Western Conference that even wasn't as good as their record would show this season. And the question here is, is, is there anything the league can do moving forward in the future? Because we've seen negative impacts in the past of, of league imbalance, right? When Kevin Durant joined the Golden State Warriors, when LeBron and the Cavs made the finals every year, it felt like, and the Warriors made the finals every year. And those were really intriguing series. But ultimately, it felt like the season itself was just a foregone conclusion. And we were going to have those two teams in the finals. And you don't necessarily want it to be a situation where, unless it's obviously Boston, who's the best team in the league, uh, where the West is just automatically going to win the finals. So what are some things that could potentially change here? Well, one, the league certainly is going to be looking at uh, expansion over the next handful of seasons. They're probably going to add between two and four teams over the next handful of seasons. And depending on how you move some of those things around, you could add more expansion teams to the West rather than the East and then flip one of the teams from the West to the East. It's been talked about forever. The fact that Memphis is a Western Conference team because they weren't always in Memphis. You could put the Grizzlies in the East, you could put three expansion teams in the Western Conference and only add one expansion team to the Eastern Conference. And then all of a sudden you've added three teams to each conference. It's just three of them are expansion teams in the West while Memphis and, or I should say you've added two teams to each conference because you're taking Memphis away, adding three expansion teams and you're adding Memphis and one out of the East. And Memphis presumably is going to be a very good team over the next couple of seasons. So that can kind of help the balance there. And then of course you're expecting expansion teams to take some time to really fully get going. And that maybe makes the Western Conference a little bit more balanced relative to the East. That's really the only thing 
thing I could foresee here that would really make a significant difference and would be easy for the league to implement because you can't just like spread out the talent, uh, you know, in, in any other way other than having some kind of an expansion situation. And maybe that's really the answer is the league is so unbelievably talented. And by coincidence, the, the, the talent has concentrated itself so much in the Western Conference that expansion would be the answer. Ultimately, I think this season is a special circumstance because, you know, the, the other teams that would have won, you know, 50 to 55 games in Eastern Conference and made this not look as bad uh, had some weird situations, like I said, with the Knicks, with the with the Bucks um, and the Sixers, mostly having to do with with health. And even though, yes, from top to bottom, the West was always going to be stronger this season and probably will be for the foreseeable future. That's just kind of been the case for a while. And that's not something necessarily that I think the league views as a gigantic issue. Now, if it's like a 20 year run where it's, you know, the the, the play in teams in the West are winning 45 games, whereas the play in teams in the East are winning 35 games. Obviously, that's a huge deal and, and something that maybe the league will take a look at in terms of how they structure things. Maybe they think about um, having less of an emphasis on the conferences themselves. I mean, think about what the playoffs this year would look like if the league just took the 16 best records in the league, regardless of conference, and put them in a bracket one through 16. Think about what the playoffs would look like this season. I mean, Boston would be at one and then they would be playing, uh, you know, Western Conference teams throughout their run that would give them more trouble than potentially some of these lower level Eastern Conference teams. But the problem is that model doesn't make sense for a variety of reasons. Certainly travel throughout the postseason is made difficult with that model. And then also that would be a, a, a radical change. And although the league has, has made a lot of changes over the last handful of years, changes to the lottery odds, adding the play in the in-season tournament, they're obviously willing to make significant changes when they feel that it is necessary. This feels more like a situation where short of changing around the expansion situation or going to a, a completely conference irrelevant playoff seating system, it's going to be one of those things where like, okay, what if they change some things around to where they have more Western Conference teams and Eastern Conference teams? And then in the following years, the East all of a sudden is better. It's not something that the league can necessarily control or predict. It's purely at this point coincidental. And then of course, you know, some of these franchises in the West uh, have just been better at, at building championship caliber rosters. And I think have a better opportunity to do so moving forward. So if you guys have suggestions in the comment section, I, I'm very open to hearing them. But for me right now, what it feels like is short of just going to the 16 best records in a league, going to the uh, going to the playoffs and not really having conferences. Um, I don't really see how this would work. And obviously it, you, that would change scheduling during the regular season, because if the East is just worse and they're playing easier games, which is the other reason that it's crazy that the West is so much better because they're playing more tougher games uh, on average because they're playing better teams. And then also they're getting easier wins because they're significantly better than Eastern Conference. So that helps add to the difference in total wins between the two conferences. But at the end of the day, you know, there are still teams in the East that can give Boston problems, especially if, uh, you know, the Sixers get healthy. And obviously you're never excited about playing Giannis in a playoff series, even as bad, even as, bad as the Bucks have looked over the last handful of weeks. Um, and the teams at the top of the West are still, you know, really, really good. And we could easily have, you know, the top two teams in each conference representing the, the conferences in the conference finals. So we'll kind of see how it shakes out. But it's interesting how big of a difference there is right now between the two conferences in terms of overall wins. And it's arguably never been as bad as it is right now.